Alright, uh, video 8. You'll be pleased to know it's a bit weird. This is actually probably one of the easiest challenges, but it's the last one. So I'm actually going to give you the least help with it. It's going to be a very short video. I'm just going to show you what it should do, because that's maybe not clear from the explanation. And then show you the two commands you're going to need. But I'm not going to give you any help other than that. I want you to basically explore those two commands and keep working until you get it to function. Right, so this is what the circuit should do. And when I change this variable resistor here, my servo motor should move proportionately. So if I turn clockwise, you'll see it turns clockwise. If I turn anti-clockwise, it turns anti-clockwise. So this is quite useful because you could use this as kind of a like a slave turret um, or like a slave robot arm. So there's actually people on the internet that have kind of hooked up little potentiometers to little, it's like a glove and each joint of the glove moves one of these little dials and then they've made like a robot arm that's got a little motor for each joint of the robot arm or the robot hand and then as they flex their hand um, and move each motor on the robot hand moves in sympathy so you can kind of make a remote controlled hand or pretty much remote control anything um, an easier simpler way to understand this is if you've ever played around with model aircraft you'll know you've got like a um, obviously a joystick that you can control like the wing flaps for well imagine the servo motor moving the wing flap up or down to whatever angle you want based on how much you turn a dial or move a lever so this is a really really basic control circuit we're doing it with uh, programming here um, the old type of radio control planes they do it in a slightly different way but it's the same basic idea so this is like a real simple program but it can be built into very impressive little control systems particularly if you're using motors and things so just before I show you the flowchart I want you to build it like this um, it's important you understand why we need to do that if you look at the PowerPoint I did mention this uh, servo motors they need normally seven volts or sometimes more to work but generally a minimum of about seven volts and the problem is our pick chip here it can only handle up to a maximum of 5 volts, 5.5 five at a push. So we need a 7 volt battery, if you like, to power this thing. But if we were to put 7 volts straight into our pick chip, we'd just blow the pick chip up. And I want you all to remember that as well, because if you damage a pick chip, um, that's like a whole 3 quid. And that's like more than our school can afford. You know how hard up Collingwood is. So uh, don't blow up pick chips by using too high a voltage. But we have got these little things in electronics called voltage regulators. Now this one's called a 7805. The last number is the key. All right, whatever the last number is, is the voltage it will adjust down to. So generally, you can put anything from about zero up to about 30 volts in this end, and a 7805 will always give you five volts, a nice smooth regulated five volts out the other side. So if you look at this circuit, we're powering our pick chip. So the plus connection of the pick chip after the voltage regulator, so we'll have 5 volts coming out of here, yet our servo motor is getting its power before it's been regulated straight out of the battery. So we've got 7 volts to the servo, but after it's been regulated, 5 volts to the pick. I want you to do that in your circuit. Because um, Circuit Wizard's just a simulation, it would actually work anyway, even if you didn't have the voltage regulator and things wouldn't blow up. But I want you to get into good practice for real life, because if you built that s without a voltage regulator in real life, you would have issues. Uh, just to prove the voltage, if I hover over here, you'll see it says voltage 5.45 volts at that point. If I hover here, we've got 6.99 volts. So proof, and down there, 6.9 volts at that, and a nice 5 and a bit volts at the Genie. Alright, that does work. So this is what it's got to do. Um, and again, I'm not going to help you with the flowchart. Let me just pause it. All I will tell you with the flowchart is that you're going to need the following two commands. You're going to need motor. And the only advice I'll give you with a motor command is if you look there are different categories depending on what type of motor you're dealing with. You should know which of those three you're using so I'll leave that down to you. And the other, only other command you're going to need is this one called expression. Okay, and you can select various things as being equal to various other things, sensors and variables. That is the only help I'm going to give you. 
you only need these three things here to get this flowchart working. It's actually very, very simple. It's relying on you to explore them and figure out what's going on. I've deliberately made it hard that way because otherwise this challenge would be just as easy as the first one. So this is kind of your chance to demonstrate that you've got an independent mind and you can explore and experiment until you get it working. Okay. Right, that concludes all the pick chip challenges. So well done if you got this far. Um, particularly for those of you who haven't done any electronics, if you've made it this far, you're doing incredibly well and you won't have too many problems with the exam or the coursework this year. Um, can you just make sure you do the following then? Save this circuit wizard file. Uh, make sure every flow chart is in there. I'm not going to do them too quick so you can skip through them. Every flow chart, every circuit, so on and so forth. Okay. Right, there you go. Hand it in to me as well, obviously. Email me the circuit wizard file um, because this is your pretty much your assignment for the last month, if you like, of this term. So it's going to be quite a big influence on the grade you get on your report and also what we talk about at the parents' evening about your independent working ability. Yeah, some of you need to uh, to work on that. Anyway, see you later.